This is a completely insane computer. So this is the new M4 Pro Mac Mini. And the M4 Mac Mini line is in general one of the most crazy lines of computers we've ever seen from Apple, mainly just due to affordability. The baseline model comes in at just $599, which for a current generation Apple processor is just absolutely ridiculous. It is by far and away the fastest computer you can actually achieve for that price point. Before we head into some benchmarks of this tiny little computer and actually compare it to my M1 Pro Mac Studio that I bought a couple of years ago, let's talk about some of the things you should care about on the Mac Mini. And first of all, of course, we have its size. You can see it side by side here with my Mac Studio. It is absolutely tiny. Like this is just ridiculous. Let's put it next to my iPhone here. Obviously, apart from the fact that it's thicker, it is comparable in size. That is ridiculous for such a fast machine. I'm essentially able to run a professional video production agency, which is what I do for my job, from this tiny little computer. And that is just so impressive. I'm able to throw literally any footage that I have at this machine and is handling it no problem. Now the size is actually a little bit of a value added for me. I actually wasn't thinking uh, that that was going to be a particularly useful thing, but I'm just enjoying the difference of real estate on my desk actually. The only thing that's a significant difference for me is that the IO on the back, there's a decent amount of ports. And I'm not seeing a significant usage difference compared to my M1 uh, Mac Studio, but on the front there is no SD card drive, which is something which I use, but it was considered to be a small trade-off. The only other thing is that the headphone jack is on the front of the computer, which is a little bit annoying because I have, as you can see, a, like a proper desk setup. So all I just did is I ended up getting a USB-C uh, to headphone jack kind of little adapter and I just run my speakers in from the back of the device like I would uh, on the Mac Studio. So it obviously does use up a USB-C port, but you, you have four ports anyway. I haven't really found that too annoying. So in terms of the specification that I actually went for on this machine, I have really, really kind of bumped this up. It's pretty much as high as you can go bar the storage. So the actual model that I've gone for, and again, you can see the very, very good deal here. These are all in pounds, but they're comparable. Uh, it was a kind of direct comparison. Uh, in dollars. So you can see the default uh, Mac Mini, which is just an insane deal. Like this is an insane deal. If you are on the fence at all about going for the baseline Mac Mini, if you really do anything that's like not really intense video editing, just go for it. $599 is a ridiculous price. But you can see that if we go over to the M4 Pro variant of the Mac, this is the one that I've gone for. We'll go into the configure section here and I have increased the chip. So I have gone for the M4 Pro chip with 14 core CPU and a 20 core GPU. That was a 200 pound upgrade. And I have also increased the memory on this model. Like I say, this is a business expense for me. It's something I use uh, literally every day. I really wanted to kind of uh, just invest in this for the next couple of years, or we'll see whether the new Mac Studio will tempt me when that gets the M4 upgrade, but I have 64 gigs of RAM in this variant. And then I actually also upgraded the storage. Now, upgrading a storage on a Mac I actually tend not to do this normally. I work off external drives so much, and for the most part, I actually don't think Apple offer very good value at all when it comes to storage. I did actually choose to go for the two terabyte SSD version. Uh, I'm just trying to cut my, down my reliance on external drives just a little bit, and it means that I can work directly off the incredibly fast SSDs inside the computer. So that's the version that I've gone for. Obviously, it's significantly more expensive than the standard 599 price tag, but let's jump over to the computer and actually see just how good the performance actually is. So I actually want to get to real world tests with this because of course that's actually what we're going to care about. I'm a video editor, I make these YouTube videos, I make videos for clients, so I of course need to make sure that the uh, computer is smashing through video files. I am going to do one benchmark, it's the only benchmark that I'll run in this video, but it's the Geekbench score. Just because I think this is really interesting, it does give you a very good baseline for how good the performance of the Mac 
actually is in comparison to other uh, Mac models available right now. So let's jump into Geekbench. Like I said, we'll do these once on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and then we'll do them on the M1 Pro Mac Studio, which is behind me. So if you don't know what Geekbench is, it basically is a program that runs a series of processing tests on your machine. This first one is a CPU test, and the score of the M1 Max, Mac Studio, came out to a single core performance of 2,450 and a multi-score performance of 12,832. And then by comparison, the M4 Pro Mac Mini was a single core performance of 3,911, so a big, big jump, and an insane, massive jump on the multi-core performance coming in at 22,379. If you're interested in the GPU scores, the Mac Mini is on the left here, 69,000 uh, versus 59,000 on the Mac. Studio. So having done those tests, one of the coolest things about Geekbench is it actually allows you to compare your scores against other Macs. So right now, these are the published charts by Geekbench, and it doesn't look like there's any M4 chips present. Um, and you can see that the single core performance was on the MacBook Pro 16-inch uh, out in November 2023 was 3,128. So the Mac Mini goes straight to the top of that chart. Then if you go into multi-core, again, it's going to be the same thing. The M4 Pro is coming in at literally a better score than any other Mac right now, which is absolutely insane. So you can get a machine roughly $1,500 uh, with just one of the processor upgrades, and it's going to be topping this list of other Macs better than the 16-inch current MacBook Pro M3 Max. The M2 Ultra is literally scoring lower than this at the moment. Absolutely insane. And now next, we've got a number of video editing tests. So first of all, I have a minute and a half timeline this is in 4K, uh, shot on a mixture between the Sony FX6 and the Sony A7S III. So it's really high fidelity, really gorgeous footage. And I'm just gonna render that 90 second timeline out and see how long that takes start to finish. This would by standard be a lot faster than this, but at the start of the project, I've got a time lapse. So it's rendering motion blur, which we will do as a standalone test in a second. But this is sped up, as you can see. I was recording on QuickTime on both computers at the same time, as in uh, whilst I was doing the test, I ensured to record on QuickTime so that I could obviously capture the screen recording and keep it as fair as possible. In terms of final times, this was actually by far the closest. And like I say, don't read too much into this being like, it will take two minutes to render out a one and a half minute timeline of 4K video because there was a time lapse in there which slowed things fairly dramatically, but only seven seconds variation. So the Mac Studio actually performed really well here. But like I said, this was actually the closest in terms of performance. Okay, so next test, I actually have a like a faked time lapse that I shot here for a recent project. Uh, and basically this wouldn't be intense. So the footage is gonna be sped up to like 5,000 times or something like that. This wouldn't be intense apart from the fact that I've got a motion blur plugin to kind of help sell the fake time lapse. Whenever you apply motion blur to an effect, it is going to destroy your computer and take ages to render. So let's see how both of the machines do with this test. I actually kept this render within Final Cut Pro. So you can see that little bar um, just above the clip here, slowly kind of rendering as you go. I did it from the moment I clicked render to the moment that this finished on each computer. And in terms of final time, Times. The M4 Pro Mac Mini came in at 42 seconds and the Mac Studio coming in at 58 seconds. So what is that, a roughly 30% improvement, something like that. If you don't know, Final Cut has a new tool to be able to optically slow down footage. So what that means is if you don't shoot a uh, shot in really high frame rate with the option of slowing it down later, Final Cut can actually use AI to like fake this for you. And it is genuinely actually really fantastic, but it does take a while to optimized and it's quite machine heavy. So this was a really good test to do. So what I've done, I've got a clip here again on both machines. We will do this, slow it to 10%. 
analyze it. So like that would that's the kind of analyzing the background background that Final Cut is doing and creating those additional frames for the video. Then we will render it in the timeline and see how long that takes. And obviously there's just a probably a couple of seconds variation just for the actual clicking to the render here. But for the most part, this is going to be a really good test just to see general speed and horsepower through Final Cut Pro. This one in line with performance, I think at this point, uh, it's again about a 30% increase, 137 on the Mac Mini and 208 on the M1 Max Max Studio. And then my final video editing test here is going to be a denoise. Uh, I'm using Topaz Video AI. It's a fantastic tool with a ton of scope to be able to do kind of different things for video. What I'm going to do here is noise reduction. So I've cranked this clip right up. It's obviously noisy as hell, as you can see. But what we're going to do is we're going to run that through Video AI with the same settings on both machines. Uh, and again, noise reduction for video, very, very intense because it's doing each and every single one of these frames. This is only a five second clip, so we'll see how long that takes on both machines. This one really was pretty impressive because noise reduction is so intensive on a machine. Um, that is roughly a 50% increase in terms of performance, uh, 52 seconds up to 125 seconds on the Mac Studio. So yeah, a really, really impressive performance bump. And so after those tests, I'd be super interested to see what your guys' thoughts are on this machine. So far, I have been unbelievably impressed given the form factor and the fact that I could potentially wipe this in my bag, take it on an international job and work from anywhere a little bit like I would do with a laptop, which certainly I would not do with my Mac Studio that's behind me. Right now, this has smashed every single task that I have actually given it. And I'll be really interested to see over the next year or so of using it, how it continues to perform. Form. One thing we do want to talk about briefly is the power button on the back of this machine. Obviously a little bit rogue from Apple to put the power button directly underneath. This is something which definitely has been blown out of proportion. I have to admit, I am not bothered at all by the idea that at once every sort of few days, I might need to slightly angle the computer up and, uh, and flip the switch. Obviously, I am aware that some people's setups might not allow for that. For me personally, this is not a big deal. I personally find the fact that you can't use and charge your magic mouse at the same time about a gazillion percent more frustrating.